Good morning, boys and girls. Good morning, Westwood. Hello to all the schools across the United States and the globe who are logged into this live webcast. Boys and girls, did you know there are over 600 classrooms and libraries filled with students who are watching right now? <laughs> there are even students as far as India enjoying this webcast. Downey School is excited and honored to host this webcast with Jessica Kensky, Patrick Downs, Scott Magoon, and Rescue. Downey School is one of five elementary schools here in Westwood, Massachusetts, which is located about 35 minutes southwest of Boston. Downey School is home to 281 incredible students in grades K through 5. Thank you to all the teachers out there who have taken the time to read Rescue and Jessica, a life-changing friendship to their students. So many of you from across the nation sent in interesting questions for our guests to answer, many of which they will answer throughout the presentation. There may be time for a few additional questions at the end. Please join me in welcoming Jessica and Rescue, Patrick and Scott. Welcome. Good morning, everyone. Thanks so much for having us at your school. This book was inspired by kids like you. Because when we would go out in public and kids your age would see our prosthetic legs or they'd see rescue, they'd ask the best questions. And they'd ask so many questions. So we decided to write a book about it. And we found our great friend Scott to be the wonderful artist to make all the beautiful pictures. So as we're reading this book, it's so important to remember that that is the real Jessica from the book, that that is the real rescue from the book. Right here with you in your library and your classrooms around the country and around the globe. So would you like to hear the story? Yeah. OK. This is the small version of the book. <laughs> Someone messed up at our printer, and they made this really small version. I hope everyone can see it okay. Can you see it? It looks big? Really? Maybe because you're so small? Uh, uh, no, oh, okay. No, you're right. It is a big version of the book. Special for today. That's Rescue as a Puppy. It's pretty cute. I mean, he's cute today, but he was really cute as a puppy. And Scott did such a great job capturing him. True, yeah, he, now that he's older and trained, he can help Jessica. On a special farm in the countryside, a pup named Rescue was in training. He was learning to help people who could not see, but he was worried. His trainer had just said, you aren't meant to be a seeing eye dog. That was hard for Rescue to hear. Helping people who can't see was the family business. The service dog team is better for you, his trainer said. Service dogs work beside their partners instead of in front of them. Well, I'd be a good service dog, Rescue wondered. What would my new partner be like? Will she like me? That is Rescue's real voice. Rescue didn't want to let anyone down. In a hospital in the city, a girl named Jessica was worried. Both of her legs were badly hurt. Everyone hoped her right leg would heal, but the doctors had to remove part of her left leg so she could be healthy again. You're an amputee now, Jessica, the doctor explained. You have to wear a prosthetic leg or use a wheelchair for the rest of your life. That was hard to hear. She had only ever walked on her own two legs. How will I do things on my own, Jessica wondered. When will I be able to walk again? What will my life be like? Her whole family was worried about her, and she didn't want to let anyone down. Back in the country, Rescue was learning how to be a service dog. When he wore his blue cape, that meant he was in training. He had to stay by his partner's side. He fetched all kinds of things. 
he even learned how to open doors. Rescue, you're a natural, said his trainer. At the hospital, Jessica was learning new ways to do things that used to come easily. She used a wheelchair to get around. She practiced getting out of bed differently. She put on a prosthetic leg so she could stand. She was learning how to walk again, even though her right leg was still hurt. Jessica, you are becoming strong, said her doctors. Rescue was proud of all he had accomplished, but he still worried. He was named in honor of a brave firefighter. He had big shoes to fill. Rescue wanted to help people just like his namesake. Jessica knew she had made a lot of progress, but she was frustrated and sad about the things she still couldn't do. She wondered if she would ever be happy again. She felt like the changes were too big, too much. One day, a visitor came to see Jessica, and she brought her service dog, Curry. Jessica saw how a smart dog like Curry could help her. That very day, she started filling out the application to ask for a dog of her own. After a while, Jessica got some very exciting news. Rescue got exciting news, too. He also got a new red cape. Yeah. Yeah. Finally, the big day arrived. It's nice to meet you, Rescue, said Jessica. She looks so nice and so pretty. <laughs> Rescue thought. Rescue stood up very tall. He hoped she didn't notice his legs were trembling, but his wagging tail gave him away. Jessica smiled a big smile and laughed a big laugh for the first time in a long time. Jessica and Rescue stayed in the country for a few weeks, and Rescue showed her all the things he could do. You're amazing, Jessica told Rescue. You think I'm amazing? <laughs> Rescue thought. I think you're amazing. <laughs> you guys are the best laughers. Back in the city, Rescue and Jessica got used to working together. Rescue brought her the things she needed. He opened things that were hard for her to reach. Rescue barked if Jessica needed someone. If she tripped, he would hold steady so she could get back up. Rescue and Jessica were always together, but when she didn't need his help, Rescue really liked to sleep, like he's doing right now. <laughs> Jessica knew that even though Rescue was special, he was a regular dog, too. She made sure that Rescue had playtime every day. But Jessica still wasn't completely healthy. One day, her doctor told her that her right leg would have to be removed, too. She would need to wear two prosthetic legs. This didn't get any easier for Jessica to hear. The night after the doctor removed her right leg, Rescue knew just what to do to help Jessica, all on his own. Rescue and Jessica had to start all over again. Slowly but surely, they learned how to do all the things they needed to do together. They did chores together, played together, and snuggled together. For the first time in a long time, Jessica felt happy. And that made Rescue happy, too. You changed my life, Rescue, she said. I couldn't have done this without you. I'm so proud of us! <laughs> he thought, you rescued me, Rescue, said Jessica. 
But the truth was, they had rescued each other. The end. Excellent listening skills. So what we're going to do now is we're going to have the best artist in the world do a drawing of rescue on the board over here. And we're going to take some of your questions at the same time. We're going to take questions from you kids sitting with us here in the library. And we have some that were submitted in advance from all the schools around the country. Who in here has a question that they would like to ask? Yes. Great question. He would like to ask, in the book, Rescue helps us. And are there other ways that he also helps us that we didn't include in the book? So I think there's two kinds of ways in the book that we show Rescue helps me. He helps me by doing physical tasks for me, which if we have time, we're going to show you today. And then he helps us emotionally, right? When he's snuggling me after my surgeries and helping me feel better and hopeful. But the other way I would say is that rescue needs to be exercised and taken outside and have free time. And sometimes Patrick and I were so sad we didn't want to do that. So having to be responsible for him and take care of him kind of made us take care of ourselves. Yes. How long did it take us to write this story? It took us a very long time, like four years. Because while we started the story, Jessica was still getting help from doctors in the hospital. So we would go to a doctor's appointments, and then we'd come home, we'd write part of the story. And then we'd go back to doctor's appointments, and then we'd write more of the story. And then we found this great team of people to help us write it even more. And then we found our main man, Scott. And she, he added all those colors, all those pictures that made the book even more special. How about one that you have, Jessica? to be for Scott. Um, how hard was it to illustrate such an emotional story? It's hard uh, drawing at all, let alone trying to get emotion into a drawing with, um, with a service dog, with a family that's together that loves each other. It was really important for me to show that family together uh, loving each other and supporting each other. Uh, there was really something really important we wanted to work into the book. Um, and it's hard to do. But if you draw people close together, smiling, arms around each other, for example, or t just together, kind of having a conversation, that goes a long way. And um, I hope that comes through uh, in the book. Good question. We've got a few rescue-related questions. This one comes from Manatee Academy in Port St. Lucie, Florida. Does rescue know when you are in pain? I think he does know when, when I'm in pain. Um, there's been a couple times when I've had a bad fall, and maybe I yelled and cried a little bit, and Rescue seemed upset and worried, and he came over and he sniffed me and he kissed me and he checked on me. So I think the answer is yes, he does know when I'm in pain. Even when I get a little frustrated, Rescue will come right over and he'll sit right on my chest, and he'll stay there until I'm happy again. <laughs> yeah, you believe that? He's like the best therapist. <laughs> yes. Oh, the question is, are we going to write another book about rescue? Well, I don't know. What do you think? Yeah. Yes? All right. Yeah, I think we are thinking of some other stories we could tell about rescue because he's so amazing. He does all kinds of things every day that help people and that help us. And we think that those are good stories to tell. Here is another question from um, Lowell Mass at the Bartlett Community Partnership School. They want to know, does Rescue ever try to take his cape off? So he can't take his cape off. Um, he does paw and try to take his gentle leader off. That's the thing that goes around his mouth so he doesn't pull me. Um, his cape only comes off when Patrick or I take it off, and that's usually when he's on a special time called free time, I'll spell it, F-R-E-E -E time, 
And when I say that and I take his cape off, he sniffs and he looks for food on the ground and he looks for friends to play with. It's kind of like when you guys are on recess. Rescue gets recess every day. He especially loves finding food <laughs> wherever it might lie. Yes. That's a great question. Have we met other community helpers? Because I remember you guys were talking about how you see rescue as a community helper, right? We've met amazing community helpers. In fact, we are here and healthy and happy because of so many community helpers. As we noted in the book, rescue is named after a brave firefighter. And that's a true story. There is a brave firefighter that rescue gets his name from. And when we got hurt, brave firefighters came to help us. So we see firefighters as community helpers. We see nurses as community helpers and doctors. Therapists who help us with our emotions. Therapists who helped us walk again. What's that? What is a what helper? What is an American helper? That's a good question. I suppose that would be any person who helps people for the good of others, right? Do you guys do things to help other people in your class or at home? Yeah. 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 That means you've got to be really good grown-ups. In fact, sometimes as kids, you're better than we grown-ups. You're really good at helping each other. All right, this is, a, this is another one we're going to pass over to Scott. This comes from John S. Bradfield Elementary out in Dallas, Texas. What medium did the illustrator use for the pictures? And the second part is, did the illustrator spend time with Rescue and Jessica in order to portray them accurately in the book? Great question. Hello, uh, Texas and everybody out there. Um, I used all digital media, all computer-based artwork when I created the artwork for this book. It looks like it's with watercolor or maybe with color pencil, but it's actually all done on my computer at home in my studio. And I did spend a good deal of time with you guys um, as we worked on the book. Um, you guys sent me a lot of reference photos, pictures of rescue, pictures of the two of you guys together. So that helped me in my drawings as well and really helped me um, visualize your life together and uh, that was really helpful and highly recommend you guys all you artists at home who like to draw look at pictures to get ideas for stuff to draw it's really helpful thanks good question Do you have drawings oh yeah sure <laughs> drawing a cat here and wait what no this is rescue yeah what do you think how am i doing Good. thanks i'm using charcoal which is something a little different than i usually use and it gets your hands all nice and dirty and black and and charcoal-y, but the cool thing you can do with charcoal is that you can smudge it like this and get some nice shading effects and coloring effects. See what I'm doing? Kind of adding a little tone there, see that? Yeah, it's so fun to work this way and messy, right? Yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna keep going with it. Should I keep going with it? Yeah. Okay. Um. All right, this question comes from Somerville, Massachusetts, from East Somerville Community School, and they would like to know, how has the book, how has the popularity of your book impacted your lives, positive or negative? Well, the really special thing that we've found from writing this book and then sharing it is how curious kids are. You all are bursting with questions. And you're always thinking about ways to help people. So what we've found is when we've gone to schools and libraries that you all are starting to think about, huh, I wonder if there are other people in our community who we can help, like Rescue Helps Jessica. How can we make our buildings more welcome to all people, whether they use crutches or a wheelchair or their own two legs? How can we be more compassionate to other people? So that's been like the best change and the best thing that we've experienced when we go around and talk to all you kids. All right, this one is from Kingsley Montessori in Boston, Massachusetts, and they wanna know a really useful question. How do you say hello to a service dog? 
And first I want to explain something and then we'll try to do a demo up here. But the first thing I want to explain is I'm going to teach you a polite way to ask. But it's okay if you ask politely and the owner of that service dog still says no. I want you to know that. They might be in a big hurry. Maybe their service dog doesn't like strangers. Maybe they don't like strangers. Or maybe you're the hundredth cute kid that day that asked to pet their dog. So even if you ask politely and they say no and you don't get to pet, you can know you did the right thing. So what we're going to need right now is a volunteer who is not allergic to dogs and who's feeling brave today. Um, yes, okay, Georgia, come on up, honey. Did I say your name right? Rescue, come here, bud. Oh, he knows he's on. Come here, bud. So Georgia and I, we're going to pretend that we just met. And we're at the park, and you see this super, here, face the cameras, honey, so they can see. You see this super cute dog, and you might say something to me. You might say, excuse me. Excuse me. I know your dog is working. I know your dog is working. But if you have time. But if you have time. May I please say hello? May I please say hello? Now, I would look at George, and I would say, she looks pretty sweet and cute and innocent. And I, you know what, I have a few minutes. And Rescue is a service dog with a special command. So I'm going to show you how he's going to greet her. And I want you to pay attention to what Rescue's tail does. Well, right now we're getting a big stretch. He's gearing up. He's like, I got a, got a big show this morning. Rescue, say hello to Georgia. You can pet him. Say hello. Good boy, bud. Good boy. What did Rescue's tail do? Thank you, Georgia. Perfect job, honey. <laughs> what did Rescue's tail just do? Yeah. Wagged. How do you think he was feeling about meeting Georgia? Yeah. And what he sniffed her. He's like, who does Georgia live with? What did she have for breakfast? Did she spill any on her pretty dress? <laughs> she didn't. But that's all the information that Rescue was getting. As soon as I told him it was OK, he went and said hello. So while we have Rescue awake and alert, I want to show you a couple of the ways that he helps me. So one of the things that I'm most worried about is having a bad fall when no one else is home. And I could fall in my prosthetics. I could fall in my crutches. I could fall out of my wheelchair. And it's kind of scary getting up like that. So our neighbors know we live in an apartment. If you hear Rescue barking, will you come check on me? Rescue only barks when I tell him or when he's having his playtime. So let's see if we can get him to talk for us this morning. So we're going to, again, pretend I had a bad fall and I need help. Rescue, are you ready? <laughs> OK, so we'll pretend I did my fall. I need help. Rescue is barking and barking and barking, and none of my neighbors were home. So I'm thinking, uh-oh, what am I going to do now? <laughs> Come closer, bud. All right, so again, I'm laying there. I, Patrick's not home. I need help. I could say, rescue, fetch phone. Come closer, bud. Give. Good job. <laughs> I'll show you a couple more. Another one that's really handy is sometimes I drop things. And even though I worked really hard to learn how to pick them up and balance in my prosthetics, if rescue's there, it's easier if he helps me. So I'm going to do a fake, fake drop. Rescue, fetch. Come closer. Come closer. Give. Good boy. Good job. And I think we have time for one more. This one is not really a, a helpful task for me. It's more for cuteness. Rescue, are you ready? Come say your prayers. Oh, good boy. Good job. Nice job, Jessica and Rescue. How about another question from in here in the library? Yes. Can, 
does rescue swim with us, boy, is he a good swimmer. In fact, once he gets in the water, we have a hard time getting him back out. And he loves chasing frisbees in the water. He loves chasing other dogs in the water. Sometimes he just likes swimming to swim. And he's soaking wet when he gets out, and he shakes it all off, and his hair goes everywhere, and the water goes everywhere. He loves it. Yes? What does rescue do to keep us safe? Great question. Um, for me, I think that when I'm wearing long pants and have my prosthetics on, people can't necessarily tell that I'm walking on prosthetics. But when they see a service dog, I think they know to give me a little more space, maybe help me with the door, maybe just give me a little bit more consideration. So that's one way rescue helps me feel safe. We have another question. We do. This one comes from Fall Creek Elementary Library in Ithaca, New York. And they would like to know, how do you deal with people who are really scared of dogs? Um, I haven't had this question before. It does happen. Sometimes people grow up in a home that doesn't have a dog in it. Or maybe they had a scary experience with a dog growing up. Or maybe they're from a place where dogs aren't um, treated like family members, like we tend to do here in the United States. So I think I let them know that rescue will not go near them if they don't want him to, and that he's very, very gentle. And I try to respect the fact that they might feel differently about a dog. Um, but it, it definitely happens. Sometimes Patrick and I have been in an elevator, and I think someone's been really scared. So I let them know he's very gentle. I'll keep him on the other side. We have another question in here. Who else has a question that they'd like to ask? Yes. How does rescue make us feel happy? He makes us laugh so many times every day. So whether he's making some kind of weird noise or he's snoring or he's playing with his toys or he'll come up and just give us a kiss, we just laugh so many times when he's in our home. And he makes all of our friends and family laugh too. So anytime Jess takes him to work or we go to the doctors, he makes everyone around us laugh, which then makes us laugh too. So we can't help but be happy around rescue. Is there a question over here? Yes. We're thinking about making another book about rescue. In fact, now that you guys are asking, maybe we'll need your help as our editors, too, to make sure that we're telling a story that you'd be interested in. Do you have any ideas? Yeah. Go for it. Oh, that's a great idea. Maybe when Rescue's a little older, a story about him getting married and having a family of his own. Wouldn't that be an interesting story? Wow. You're so creative. Do you have another one? We do. We do. We do. This question actually might have come from the farthest away. This one is all the way from India, Right Hope School, India the country. Um, and they want to know, how long did it take to train Rescue before he came to you? So Rescue started training when he was eight weeks old, just like Scott drew him at the beginning of the book when he's a tiny little puppy. Eight weeks old, and he was done training when he was 18 months old. So almost two years, and then that's when we were matched. And we've been together for five years now. And Rescue had to study so hard that whole time. And as we learned from the book, sometimes he would learn something, and then he'd have to start all over again. And I'm sure you all know what that's like, too, when you work really hard to learn something in school, and then you realize, oh, I thought I had it, but I think I have to start all over again, or I have to try a little harder. And Rescue did that throughout his training. Here's another one from Ellicott City, Maryland, Howard County Central Library. What is the most beautiful or meaningful treasure that you have found in this life experience. For us, it's been, or for me, it's been all the amazing people who we've met. We've met people who have gone through some really hard times in their lives, but that they've gotten through it somehow because they have a lot of people around them who love them. We've been told amazing stories by them, just as we've been able to tell our story at the same time. 
we have all kinds of friends now from right here in this library to India. Can you believe that? That's so cool. So that's been really special for me. Oh, you're going to make me answer that hard one as well. Okay. Um, I assume they mean by this experience the book experience, writing the book and making it. I think getting to tell your own story after something kind of really hard and sad happens can help you heal and get over it. Um, so just the writing of the story was really helpful for both of us. And then I think getting to share it with so many different people. Um, for us, we aren't teachers. We wouldn't be back in the elementary schools necessarily right now. So it's been really special to come visit all the young people and remember what it was like during this stage of life and um, getting to meet new friends, I think. It's been really, really fun. We're going to check in on our artist, Scott. Perhaps, Scott, you'd like to answer that question, too. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for your question. Uh, this book has meant so much to me and my family. I've spent so much time uh, talking about the book, visiting schools, libraries, bookstores uh, with you guys and with my family. So to have them along to talk about the book and have them along has been great. But I think the most important thing, most valuable thing, the most wonderful thing I've gotten out of working on this book is getting to meet you two, you three, and uh, getting to know you and consider you among my friends and uh, just helping you along in this experience together has been awesome. Oh yeah, drawing update. How's my cat? Ah, yeah. oh, my gosh, I totally misunderstood what I was supposed to draw. No, I'm kidding. It's obviously rescue. What do you guys think? Yeah? Should we, should, should we put a silly hat on him or something? Yeah. No, no, we can't do that, no. Well, thanks so much. It's been really fun. I'm going to add a few more details and I'll sign it. And then I'm going to leave it for you guys here in the library. How's that sound? Yeah. OK. Great. Thanks. Can anyone answer this question? In Scott's drawing, why is Rescue wearing a red cape? Me? Yes. Because he's a service dog. Because he's a service dog. And if we remember from earlier in the story, what color was his cape? Blue. It was a blue cape because he was in training. Right. So he got a different color cape once he graduated to be a full service dog. Great job. I think this is a good one from Salt Creek Elementary School, Elk Grove in Village, Illinois. What advice would you give a student interested in becoming an author? Um, I think we could both answer this. My advice would be to practice a lot to ask people, your friends and family, for suggestions and teachers to help you edit. And I think the other key thing is to look at all the books out there and see what stories are missing. We looked through lots of books and realized there wasn't a lot of stories with service dogs or people that had a special ability who looked differently, who got around differently. And we thought, hey, there's, a, there's an opening here. There's a gap. We want to try to help fill that gap. So look at all the books and see maybe what's not being shared. I agree with that. And I also think to tell a story from the heart. Because if you tell a story from the heart, if you write a book from your heart, then you know that it's going to be really meaningful for you, and other people will find it meaningful too. Oh, this is one of the most popular questions. Uh, this one comes from Bill Ricca, Mass. How old is Rescue? Does anyone in here remember how old Rescue is? He's six. Anyone in here six? Some, some people are almost six or six. They have invited Rescue to be at their birthday party, which is very kind. Rescue has a little bit of gray hair on his chin that shows a little bit of his age. But oh, yeah, Scott, you can add some. Oh, perfect. Great. Yeah, we see the little gray hairs in there. Capture his wisdom, really. All right. <laughs> All right, guys, we've got another great question from Spencer Westlawn Elementary in Mobile, Alabama. Um, were you all interested in writing or drawing when you were young children? Um, I liked to draw when I was young. I stopped doing it when I was a grown-up. I'm not sure why. I did love to write when I was younger, and that's something I've kept doing. So that was a big thing for me, although I never dreamed that I would write a children's book. It, that was beyond my wildest dreams. I have a feeling Scott might have some insight to his childhood drawing. Oh my gosh, I drew all of the time. Do you guys like to draw too? Yeah. 
Yeah, right? Keep drawing. Don't ever stop drawing because if you keep drawing and keep writing all the time, you can do what I do all day long and draw pictures, right? It's pretty cool. It's, and you get messy. Yeah. No. I believe it. I saw some of your work. I've seen all of your artwork on the walls here at the school. I wish everybody at home and at schools could see all the incredible work uh, you guys have done to welcome us here at this school with incredible artwork. Keep it up, guys. Great work. Would you guys like to know a couple of secrets from the book? Yeah. Some hidden special secrets? So first of all, you're going to be the page turner, honey. So in this was something we learned when we started making the book. When you put secret things in your book, they call it Easter eggs. So we'll take you on an Easter egg hunt. The ducklings. Yeah, it's kind of a funny way to say it. So rescue here is opening the door for little ducklings. Or Well, we like to think they're ducklings because we think they're the ducklings from Make Way for Ducklings. That's a... Sp and the mama duck, it looks like, huh? So that was a special book to all of us. It's a book that's well known in Boston and set in Boston. So Scott drew the ducklings in here for us that Rescue's opening the door for. Oh, this is the romantic one. I'll let Patrick explain this one. Well, the ducklings are also in this picture. Does anyone see them right down there swimming around in the water? Perhaps in the next book, Rescue could be swimming with the ducklings. But the special part about this page is that, one, it's just the most spectacular page. And as some students have pointed out, they realize how the colors change in the picture, that they go from darker colors to brighter colors. And that's Scott's amazing job of showing how Rescue and Jessica had some really tough times when they weren't so sure how things were going to turn out. And then as they became a team, things got brighter and more hopeful and more happy. The other cool part about this page is that this is a real bridge in Boston, and I asked the real Jessica if she would marry me on that spot. And she said yes. <laughs> Can you believe that? She said yes. So we think that's a pretty special spot. Scott, would you have anything you'd like to add about this page? I can talk about this. I loved having the idea of them walking into the sunset at the end. I also like the, the idea of them walking on a bridge. Uh, the bridge, a prosthetic is a kind of bridge, and I thought that was a really nice symbol to have at the end of the story. A prosthetic, uh, particularly one like Jessica and Patrick have, is a bridge from them to the ground. And so to have them on a, on a bridge is a, is a symbol for how they've gotten through uh, their experience with, uh, with a prosthetic. And um, I also like the ducks because labs are, can often chase ducks and go after ducks. And to have uh, Rescue behaving himself and being very focused with Jessica, I thought was really significant to have in there as well. Lots of cool stuff um, I tried to work in. Beautiful page. OK, so because you now know that we're married in real life, we had to change the story just a little bit because Jessica's like a tween. She's like 12 in the book. So she couldn't really be married, right? Instead, Scott was really nice to include me or a reference to me as the kid brother. Do you see that? Does that look like me at all? The boyish charm, perhaps? The glasses? The really cool part about most of the scenes where the little brother shows up, what's he carrying? He's carrying a fire truck, just like we said before, because Rescue's named after a brave firefighter, and we have so many brave firefighters in our lives. Yeah. Another Easter egg that Scott put in is, um, do you see this bright constellation of stars? This was a really sad night for me, right? My, I had my second leg removed. And Scott researched and drew the dog star constellation, which people back a long time ago used to use for navigation. And because we have such a poetic and thoughtful illustrator, he saw that Rescue was helping Jessica navigate her new life. 
And so it was really special and meaningful to put those stars in there. So that's another hidden Easter egg. Does anyone here have a favorite page from the book that they'd like to have us pull up for you? Yes. What was your favorite page? My favorite this page? Tell us what you like about this page. Because Rescue's getting the phone. Right. And we just saw him do that. Right. It is, it is really funny. It's really cute. And it's super helpful. Right. Because as Jessica said, if she's ever in trouble and needs help, Rescue can get the phone. Who else has a favorite page? Yes. Georgia. The second page. OK. We can flip to it. Second page of the book. This one, what do you like about this page? I know why Dad did it. Oh, because you drew it once. We love that. We've seen so many kids take their own shot at drawing Scott's illustrations. We would love to see that, because then they get their own little interpretation of it. You brought it home? That's probably a good place for it to be. Yes, what's your favorite page? You changed my life. You like that page. You're even smiling as you talk about it. What do you like about this page? That's right. They zoomed in on their faces. And what do you think their faces are saying? How are they feeling? They're happy. That's such a great observation. We love this page, too. Scott, can you tell us a little bit about what it went into drawing this one? Thanks for saying that. I appreciate that very much. Um, there are so many scenes throughout the book where we see uh, uh, Jessica and Rescue from a way far away, from a distance. This gets back to what we were talking about earlier about showing compassion and care and love between family members. And this is a good example of how we capture that. We come in close, just like a hug almost with our characters, right? And we take a moment with them, just the two of them, very simple background, warm colors. We have reds, greens, some nice warm yellows. And I think that really kind of makes a nice warm scene. And I think you picked up on that uh, emotion, I, I hope, I think. Um, fun to draw. You know, it's hard to draw so many uh, hairs on Jessica's head. I, I didn't know when to stop. I just kept drawing the hair. But, and rescue, too, of course. But it was fun. Thank you. Thanks for that. Do you have a favorite page? What's your favorite page? When rescue and Jessica meet for the first time. Let's pull it up for you. This one? Mm -hmm. Tell us what you like about that page. Exactly. Rescue's so excited. His tail's wagging. He's so excited to meet Jessica, just like he was excited to meet Georgia earlier. And they're like becoming a team in that very moment. They've been on these different paths, right? Some of it's been kind of hard, and they're wondering what the future is going to be like. And they meet each other and say, oh, boy, I think this is a good team right here. And they're excited about it. Great observation. Yes, what's your favorite page? When Jessica's throwing the Frisbee, when they're in the park together. What do you like about this page? Jessica and Rescue are smiling. They're both so happy. I love this page because it shows that even though Jessica has two prosthetic legs, she can be really athletic, right? And she can be happy and strong, and she can go out and play with her dog at the park. And Rescue is really good. When he is on free time, boy, can he jump and run. And it's so fun to watch. Did you have a favorite page? What's your favorite page? When they met... The same page that we've talked about earlier. What do you like about that page? Um, that, um, rescue's that rescue's getting the phone. Yeah, he's like, we're meeting for the first time, so I better show you all my good tricks, <laughs> all my special skills. I've been training so hard for all these years. I better show off now. <laughs> we are so grateful to you all here at the Downey School for having us. We're so grateful to all of the schools who have tuned in from across the country, from India. This has been such a special experience for us. 
We want to say thank you to all of you for reading the book. Thank you for all the questions that you've had about the book. We hope you continue to have conversations in your classroom, at home, in your libraries. Um, and this has been just the most special thing for the three of us, the four of us, to be a part of. So thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Thank you. See ya.